today we'll be starting a new topic that is uh, modeling of curves and uh, you are probably aware that if you have any curve any general three dimensional curve we can normally express the equation of this curve in a parametric form and that is if we say x is equal to some function of u similarly y will be some function of u and z will also be some function of u where u is a parameter which will vary within a certain range from this point to this point okay from the starting of the curve to the end point of the curve let's say typically if we say u is equal to u1 here and u is equal to u2 here okay so curves can normally be expressed in a parametric form in this manner and uh, typically we will be dealing with only a parametric representation of the curves okay they can also be represented in an explain in, in an implicit manner as f of x y z is equal to 0 okay but we will normally be dealing with curves when they express in a parametric form like this and by convention we take the range of this parameter to be varying from 0 to 1 okay that means we'll say u will be between 0 and 1 Okay, so if, uh, between u1 and u2 without loss of generality we can say that it is between 0 and 1 okay and some typical examples of parametric curves okay if you have a straight line we can express the equation of this straight line as x is equal to a plus l times u y will be equal to let us say b plus m times u and z will be equal to c plus n times u where the starting point is a b c and the direction cos cosines are l m n okay similarly if you have a simple circle okay this is a closed curve again we can write it in a parametric manner okay this is the center let us say the center is at 0 0 and the radius let us say is a we can say x is equal to a cos theta y is equal to a sin theta okay this is a parametric representation in an implicit representation it will come out to be x squared plus y squared equal to a squared okay so this way we can represent curves in a parametric uh, manner a circle is typically a case of a second degree curve quadratic curve okay but we can also have higher degree curves and the first type of curve that we will be dealing with in detail are what are referred to as cubic curves okay so if we call if we talk of parametric cubic curves okay or we will refer to them as PC curves okay now as, you, as the name suggests we are talking of cubic curves so the parametric equation of these curves okay the equation in this form will be a cubic expression and if you write it let us say if we have a curve <coughs> like this we will write the equation of this curve as let us say okay, a 0 plus a 1 u plus a 2 u square plus a 3 u q okay, that means this is a vector u is a parameter in the range of 0 to 1 okay and a0 a1 a2 a3 are constants okay typically in fact a0 a1 a2 a3 all four of them will be vectors okay because we are talking of the vector equation in three dimensions okay or we are talking of space curves that is curves which are in three dimensions okay so let us say the starting point here will be some p0 which is the starting point 
at this point u is equal to 1 so we will call this as p1 okay again the other position vectors p0 and p1 okay so this is a vector equation and we can write it as I'll again write it here p is p of u a0 plus a1 u plus a2 u squared plus a3 u cube we can write this as the x component of this equation will give us this scalar equation okay similarly the y component will give us okay and similarly for the z component we will get a okay now the x y and the z components all three together can be expressed as one vector equation like this okay or alternatively what we can say is that this vector p okay will be equal or is equal to this matrix multiplied by okay so this equation can also be written as this okay where p is equal to u cube u square u1 this matrix multiplied by the matrix of the four vectors not the transpose the transpose yeah i want this to be a, a, a column vector this row vector multiplied by a column vector okay and this will say p so this we can say p is equal to u times a okay where u this matrix u is a matrix of the four cubic uh, the four terms in a cubic polynomial and this matrix a is a matrix of these four vectors Okay, now these four vectors are the coefficients of this equation. Okay, and if you're talking of four vectors of this type, okay, then these four vectors have uh, each vector has got three components in it. So these four vectors together have got twelve components. Okay, each vector is a three tuple x, y, z. So these four vectors together have got twelve components, and this matrix A will also have twelve components. Okay, so if we specify these four vectors, we'll get a unique PC curve. Okay, so we want to specify any cubic curve between two points or any general cubic curve. We need to specify these four vectors. <coughs> okay now before we go further very briefly about the history of uh, cubic curves or the history of how the uh, uh, definition of these curves have come about i think you will be aware of the concept of splines are you aware of splines no okay the splines are basically uh, let's say you take a uh, take a wire okay a steel wire or some uh, wire like that and in the ancient days for modeling surfaces 
we used to take wires of this shape, attach weights at different points. Okay, if you hang a slightly stiff wire and then attach weight at different points, you will get different kinds of uh, curves in that. Okay, and those curves will typically be cubic curves. You can write down the deflection equation and uh, prove that. Okay, so and uh, for getting smooth curves, especially in good aesthetics, maybe in the case of ship hulls and so on, these kind of instruments have been used. Okay, which are basically uh, wires with weights at different points. Weights, physical weights. Okay, you take a weight and hang it over there. Okay, so you take a slightly stiff wire. Okay, which is let's say fixed. Uh, even from the top, even from the side and so on and then you hang weights or give it tension from one side and so on. Then you can get a general curve and in order to get a smooth curve, uh, people have used instruments of that type to get different kinds of curves which are used in different uh, places, specifically in the case of ships and boats and so on. Okay, And the, an extension of that is a spline set that you might have used in uh, your graphics courses. You get a set of uh, spline sets which are basically instruments like your set squares and so on with different kinds of curves and those curves are typically curves that are generated by that kind of process. Okay, and It can be shown mathematically that if you are using a set of weights on a wire, okay, the equation that you will get will eventually be a cubic uh, equation. Okay, So that is how you uh, we come to uh, splines. And Typically, this we are, this parametric cubic curve, PC curve that we are talking of, is a cubic spline which we are which we are going to deal with. Okay, and in an equation of this type, now coming back to PC curves, in an equation of this type, I have said that A, this matrix A consists of twelve numbers. Okay, or four vectors. So if I write it down, it will consist of A three x, A three y, A three z. Similarly, a two x, a two y, a two z, and so on. Okay, so now if I want to uh, specify a cubic curve, I have to give these twelve numbers or these four vectors. Okay, but typically, what I like to specify a cubic curve by specifying the starting point, end point, and maybe some intermediate points. Okay, it is very difficult to give numbers. And then get a physical feel of the curve. Okay, so if you are, if you are working on an editor, I like to specify these curves, so these uh, endpoints, or maybe I like to specify the slopes here. Okay, only then one can get a physical feel of these uh, of this curve, and one can modify this curve freely. Okay, so if you take a curve of this type, what are its endpoints to start with? If I consider this, this equation, the starting point will be given by u equal to zero. Okay, so if I put u equal to zero, I'll get the starting point p zero. Okay, or we can write it as p of zero to be u is zero. These three terms become zero. This is one will be equal to a zero. Okay. P1, P1 will be these four terms will become 1, so we will get A0 plus A1 plus A2 plus A3. Okay. If I consider tangent vectors, The tangent vectors for this curve will be given by the derivative with respect to u. Okay, and if I differentiate this expression with respect to u, what will I get?
is that okay okay well this is a constant matrix so i can just differentiate this with respect to u okay or i can take the this initial uh, definition and differentiate that with respect to u okay so i'll get this expression so now this is the same as 3u squared times a3 plus 2u times a2 plus a1 okay now if i consider a cubic curve and i want to find out the tangents at the starting point and at the end point okay at u equal to 0 and at u equal to 1 So P U at zero will be equal to A one, okay, and P U at one will be equal to A one plus two A two plus three A three, okay. <coughs> Now this, let's say if I call this as A tangent at zero, and this maybe I'll call it as a tangent at one. Okay, tangent at u equal to zero and tangent at u equal to one. Okay, so now I have got four equations. This is one equation. This is the second equation. <coughs> starting point, end point. Starting tangent uh, vector, ending tangent vector. Okay, so I have got four equations, and my aim is to find out the four variables, a zero, a one, a two, and a three. Okay, but well, as I said, for any general cubic curve, I like to specify the starting point, end point, and maybe the two tangent vectors <coughs> to specify this curve. Okay, so if I want to get the values of these four variables in terms of starting point, end point. Starting tangent vector and the ending tangent vector. I can solve for a zero, a one, a two, and a three in terms of these four. Okay. If I solve it out, I'll get a zero is equal to p at zero. Okay. This is the first equation that we have. A zero is equal to p of zero. Okay. A one. Will turn out to be equal to from here t zero. Yeah. But t zero will be specified as a unit vector. Like if you specify tangent, tangent direct, tangent will be specified as a direction. Like no. No. When I am taking the derivative. No. The, this is all right. When you take the derivative, you will get the tangent. That is a unit tangent vector you are talking of. But when you specify the tangent, you will specify it as a unit tangent. Why? Like, well, if you want, uh, like, if you are defining a curve chart, what you know only is the direction. How do you know the magnitude of what tangent vector is? Okay. See, typically, what happens is if you take a curve like this. Okay. You have taken a unit tangent vector here and a unit tangent vector here. Yeah. Okay. You get one curve. Because at that point, I only know the tangent vector. I, I only only know the unit tangent vector because I only know the direction in which I want the curve to. No. What one can do is, and at this point, you change the magnitude also. Okay, if you change the, you keep the direction the same, and change its magnitude, the curve from this position will change to something like this. <coughs> okay, so even by changing the magnitude, you can change the shape of the curve. Okay, similarly, if I change this tangent vector also, maybe the curve would become something like this. Okay, so typically when you are specifying the uh, four vectors in question, you have to specify the magnitude. As well as the direction. Now, if you just specify the direction as a unit vector, we can still get other cubic curves. Okay, by changing the magnitude of the tangent curve. Okay, so this tangent vector that we take typically t zero and t one, we always deal with the complete vector, not just the direction. Right? Okay, so we get a zero and a one, and If you want to get a two, <coughs> I 
will get a2 to be equal to minus 3 times p0 plus 3 times p1 minus 2 times pu at 0 or t0 minus pu at 1 or t1. Okay, this you can verify from the four simultaneous equations. Okay, and similarly A3 you will get will be 2 times P0 minus 2 times P1 plus Pu at 0 plus Pu at 1. Okay, so this way we can get A0, A1, A2 and A3, the four uh, vectors in question. Okay, and again If you take, okay, initially the definition that we had P is equal to U times A. Okay, now this, the, this matrix A consists of a set of algebraic coefficients. Okay, there is no direct physical significance for the four vectors A0, A1, A2, and A3. Okay, and we have defined a cubic curve using this equation. So, this expression is referred to as the algebraic form of the PC curve. This is called algebraic form of the PC curve. Okay, because the uh, the coefficient of this matrix A are the algebraic coefficients. Okay, and if you take A0, A1, A2, A3 in this form and put it back over here, what we will get? I'll just. Our equation is initially P of u is equal to A3 u cube plus A2 u squared plus A1 u plus A0. Okay. Now this if I take this expression for A3 and similarly I take these expressions of A0, A1 and A2 and I assemble them together, what we will get will be an expression of this type if you look up P0 it is appearing in A0, okay, P0 is appearing here also okay, and Similarly, P0 is appearing here also. Okay, the coefficient of A3 is u cube. The coefficient of A2 is u squared, and the coefficient of A0 is 1. Okay, so when I ex complete out, when I write down this equation, the terms of P0 will be obtained from A0, A2 and A3. Okay, so, the terms of P0 will contain 2u cube minus 3u squared plus 1. Is that okay? Okay, because P0 is contained in A0, A2 and A3, coefficient of A3 is u cube, A2 is u squared and A0 is 1. Okay, so I will get 2 u cube minus 3 u squared plus 1 okay, and that is what I have written over here as a coefficient of P0. Okay, similarly, I consider coefficient of P1, so P1 is contained here and it is contained here. Okay, this is u cube this is u squared. So, coefficient of p 1 will be minus 2 u cube plus 3 u square. Okay. This is this will be minus 2 u cube plus 3 u squared times p 1. Okay. Similarly, if I consider coefficient of p u at 0, this is one term Okay, and P u at 0 this is the second term. 
and this is the third term. Okay, so if I assemble them, I will get this plus u cube minus 2u squared plus u times <coughs> pu at 0. Okay, and the remaining term that I will get will be u cube minus u squared times pu at Is this all right? So, coefficients of P0, P1, PU of 0, and PU of 1 will be these four coefficients. <coughs> okay. Now, this I will write that as now this is one function of u, this is a second function of u, this is another function of u, and this is also a function of u. Okay. So, I will write this as f1 of u, f2 of u, f3 of u and f4 of u, this multiplied by the vector p0, p1, t0, t1. Okay. Now, these four vectors uh, expression f1 u, f2 u, f3 u and f4 u are basically cubic expression in u okay. and I have said u is varying from 0 to 1. Okay. So, these four are referred to as blending functions. Okay, but essentially what we are doing is along the length of the curve, let us say if I consider my curve again like this, okay, this is u equal to 0, this is u equal to 1. Along the length of this curve at any specific point, let us say at this point, if I take a point here which is u equal to 0 0.4, at this point if I, find out, if I want to find out this the coordinates of this point, I will find out the value of these four functions and then I will get some weightages, I will get some numbers, I will take a weighted sum of these four tangent vectors, uh, these four vectors. Okay. So, these four functions are basically giving how much weightage is to be given to each of these four vectors as we move along the length of the curve. Okay, so along the length of the curve, these four the these four uh, weightages will change, and the way in the manner in which these four weightages will change, that can be seen by the blending functions. Okay, if I consider these four blending functions, this is f one u, this is f two u, f three u, and f four u. Okay, so these are the four blending functions which define this cubic curve. Okay, if I have any general kind of curve, I give these four vectors. The shape of the curve will be decided by the blending function of that curve. Okay, for a cubic curve, for a parametric cubic curve, these are the blending functions we use. For some other kind of curve, we might be we might use different kinds of blending functions. Okay, if we use different kinds of blending functions, we'll get a different shape of the curve. We'll get a different characteristics of the curve. Okay, so this equation for the cubic curve for the PC curve would become P of u will be equal to F1 u, F2 u, F3 u, F4 u multiplied by this matrix which we call as the matrix B. Okay, this matrix B is P0, P1, P0, T1 transpose. Okay, this B 
is the geometric matrix. Okay, or the standard geometric matrix, which consists of starting point, end, end point, starting tangent vector, and ending tangent vector. Yeah. Uh, yes, so cubic curves, blending functions are the same. <coughs> okay, if we define some other kind of curve, okay, maybe a, a, a Bezier curve or a B span curve, again of the same degree, okay, then the blending functions can be different. Okay, for a parametric cubic curve, for a PC curve, these are the blending functions we choose. Okay, <coughs> and this matrix, uh, this equation. We will write that as P is equal to F times B. Okay, where F is the matrix of the blending functions, B is the standard geometric matrix. Standard geometric matrix. Okay, and this matrix F consists of the four blending functions, which we can write down as 2u cube minus 3u squared plus 1, this is minus 2u cube plus 3u squared, u cube minus 2u squared plus u and u cube minus u squared. Okay, and again we will write that as This set of four uh, expressions we can write down in this matrix form. But this is u cube u square u one, same as the standard u matrix that we had earlier, multiplied by this set of coefficients. Okay, this this uh, row multiplied by this column will give us the first equation and so on. Okay. Okay, and this again we'll say will be equal to u times m. Okay, so f will be equal to u times m, where m is the matrix of is this matrix, is the matrix of the coefficients of the blending functions. Okay, so our definition of the cubic curves, which was earlier p equal to u a, we change that to f times b. Okay, where B is the standard geometric matrix, F is the matrix of the blending functions, and this is equal to U times M times B. Okay, so what we'll get will be from this A will be equal to M times B. Okay, A is equal to M times B. So, if you are given, if you are given the standard geometric matrix, okay, that is the matrix B, and we want to find out the algebraic coefficients, we only have to pre-multiply it by M, where M is the uh, matrix of the coefficients of the blending function. Okay, and B is the standard geometric matrix. Which is given by P0, P1, T0, T1. Or we can say P0, P1, some constant, let us say K1 <coughs> times 
unit normal vector, unit tangent vector and k2 times unit tangent vector. Okay. Any questions up to this point? Okay. Now, <coughs> if you look up the, the definition of the uh, PC curves in terms of the standard geometric matrix, we have these four blending functions. And I said these blending functions will be varying from, or will be varying in the uh, as we go from zero to one. Okay, as we go from the starting point to the end point of the curve. Okay, as we go from u equal to zero to u equal to one, these four blending functions will change. Let us just see in, in what manner do these functions change. Okay, so if we consider this is u equal to zero, this is u equal to one. Okay, and if I want to plot, let's say f1, my expression for f1 this is my expression for f1. So, at u equal to 0, it will be equal to 1, and at u equal to 1, it will be equal to 0, 2 minus 3 plus 1. Okay, so f1 will change. And it will change in a cubic manner, so it will change something like this. Okay, this is one, and here it is zero. Okay, similarly, if I want to draw F2, okay, if you look at F2, at u equal to zero, it is zero, and at u equal to one, it will be one. Okay. So, F2 will change something like this, here it will be 0, here it will be 1. Okay. And this should be expected because F1 and F2 are the weightages given to the starting and the end points. Okay. So, to the starting point we have to give it a weightage of 1 at the starting point and 0 at the end point. Okay, similarly, at the end for the end point, the weightage has to be zero at the starting point and one at the end point. Okay. If we consider F three at u equal to zero, it will be zero. Okay, and at u equal to one, also it will be zero. Okay, 1 plus 1 minus 2. So, F3 will take a shape which will be something like this. Okay, and F4 again at u equal to 0, it will be 0, u equal to 1 also, it will be 0. Okay, and the shape of this curve is something like this okay it's negative okay, if you take an intermediate values you find out that it is negative okay so the four blending functions will have a shape like this okay our equation is given by Okay, this is the weightage for P0, this is the weightage for P1, this is for T0 and this is for T1. Again, I will repeat T0 and T1, the way I have defined them are not unit tangent vectors, but they are other tangent vectors. Okay, and if I, my equation is P of u is equal to F1 P0 
plus F2 P1 plus F3 sorry F3 T0 plus F4 T1. If I want to find out the tangent vector at any point in the curve, I will get P u at u to be the differential of F1 with respect to u times P0 plus differential of F2 with respect to u times P1 plus F3 u times P T0 plus F4 u times T1. Okay. <coughs> And this again I will write that as F u times b, where F u is a matrix of, of these four vectors, of these four expressions, sorry. Okay, and this I can again obtain by looking at p is equal to u times the matrix of coefficients that we had 2, minus 2, 1, 1 minus 3, 3, minus 2, minus 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0. You can make this change. I want 2 u cube minus 3 u square plus 1. And this term has to be 1, this will be uh, this one will be 0. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, this one is 0. This times B. So, if I want to express this I can look at these coefficients and carry out my differentiation and directly get a matrix for F u. Okay. So, my F u just by simple differentiation would be 6 u square minus 6 u this will be minus 6 u square plus 6 u 3 u square minus 4 u plus 1 okay, and 3 u squared minus 2 u. Okay, and again, these are the four blending functions for getting the tangent vectors. We can plot these also. Okay, if I plot them, uh, if I superimpose them on this, My first blending function that is f1 of u that will be uh, 0 at u equal to 0, 0 at u equal to 1. Okay, And if I plot it here, it takes a shape something like this. Because these blending functions are quadratic, they are not cubic. Okay, f2 of u at u equal to 0 it is 0 otherwise it is 1 but it is a complement of this okay so f2 of u, that comes out to be like this okay f3 will get that to be i think something like this and f4 will be something like this Okay, so these are the blending functions for the tangent vectors. This one is F three U, this is F two U, and this is F one U. Okay, and typically by looking at these blending functions, one can make out a lot about the nature of the curve. Okay, because you can make out that at the starting point the weightage is 1 to the tangent uh, to the vector p0 that means the curve is starting from p0 similarly the curve is ending at p1 and then from the shape of these curves people uh, one can normally make out the nature of the curve okay we we'll see that let's say when we go on to bezier curves 
the shape of these bending functions will be totally different okay and so on okay so normally when you are talking of modeling of curves a lot of stress is given on these bending functions okay any question on whatever I have covered today just one small thing here you are saying P u of u is equal to F u times B this again we can write that as u times m u times b where m u are set of coefficients obtained from this matrix okay and similarly if I want to find out the second uh, derivatives at a curvature I will get p u u will be equal to which will again be equal to u times m u u times b Okay, this will be for the second derivatives or the curvature. Okay, any questions on whatever I have covered today? <coughs> okay, we will stop here. Next time we will see how to specify these cubic curves using four points which has to pass. Okay, right now we have specified the curve by specifying the two endpoints and the tangent vectors okay we'll get a curve let's say something like this okay if, if instead of this we want to specify four points through which the curve should pass like this so any four point we should be able to specify a cubic curve okay if we want to do that then how do we get the equation of the pc curve okay we'll see that in the next uh, class